family god bless you for joining me this afternoon once again for our midday connection it's always a blessing to have you join me and uh, we get it into the word together there is so much power in unity you see bible says one will put to flight a thousand but two bible says will put to flight ten thousand that defies every form of math if one is a thousand then two should be two thousand but the Bible says to bring so much power that it defies every natural order. Reason why you and I must get together every afternoon around this time to join our faith upon the power in the word and to pray in the presence of God to see a change in our situation, a change in our family and a change in our community. And so this afternoon, those of you that are joining in, I encourage you, why don't you take a minute to share the page, invite somebody by doing so, so that even the number of us here can increase. Because the more we gather, the more of God's people coming together for the purpose of the word and for the purpose of prayer, we send some demons flying. We send some demons running away. Listen, the unity of the body of Christ is something that is so powerful. When we come together, child of God, in case you didn't know, we terrorize the devil and his surrogates. And so I want to encourage you, invite your friends even right now as we get into the word. Invite somebody you know that needs a word, the word of God. Listen to me, there is nobody who doesn't need a word. Bible says in the book of John that there was nothing that was made that was made without a word. It means there is nothing that is created. There is nothing that can occur without the power of the word. In fact, everything on this earth, Bible makes very clear, was created with the word. So I want to challenge you that there is somebody out there you know, you might not know, whatever the case may be, but there is somebody out out there who needs to hear the word of God this afternoon because the word of God will make a change an indelible change in their life and somebody needs to hear this word so take a minute share the page invite your friends some of you can text them and text them the link and tell them let's get on right now because God's word is a prophetic word it will speak to their situation it will speak into the situation they find themselves in there is somebody listening to me right now that needs a word desperately from God. God knows your heart and so he's bringing a word to your situation today. And I can tell you something, no matter how dark your situation is, when the word comes, I know the word of God is the source of all light. It will bring a change into your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. And so this afternoon, I want to welcome you. As we continue on this beautiful journey of coming to the finish line, there is a finish line for 2020 God wants you and I to get to. God wants you and I to finish the race that is set before us in this year. Your finances was a race. Your ministry was a race. Your marital destiny was a race. Every intention of God for your life must be run like a race. And Bible says any man that is running a race doesn't engage in things that bring distraction. His goal is the finish line. When you stand on that track, all your eyes, all your attention, all your energy is geared towards the finish line. Your goal is to get to the finish line and you want to get there so you get get a prize that is set before you and so when you are set on the finish line you don't allow any element of distraction and i'm speaking prophetically to somebody who has not been able to accomplish the goals that were set for this year you allow distractions to step in listen 
Bible says anyone that watches the wind will not run this race. Anybody that watches the wind will not take any step. Anybody, Bible says, that watches the COVID-19 will not run the race of destiny. Some of you listening to me, you didn't do the very things God asked you to do because you allowed the COVID to be a distraction. I've always said, peace is not the absence of war. You want to have peace? No. Peace is never the absence of chaos. It is not the absence of calamity. Peace is you still being able to maintain your focus. It is you being able to sleep in a boat in the midst of a storm, laying on a pillow and resting in the arms of the Lord. It means that there could be all things happening around you. Bible says that we are tossed to and fro. Bible says we are perplexed on every side. We are challenged on every side. There are all kinds of activities happening on every side. But Bible says that as long as we maintain our focus on him, Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. You want to finish your assignment for this season? Your eyes must be set on him. Your eyes must be set on him. He's called the finisher. It means the finishing line is Christ himself. Our finishing is in him. And so your eyes must be set on him. Glory to God. And this week we've been talking about smart goal. Bible says many are the plans in the heart of a man. But it is only the plans of the Lord that shall prevail. It means we can have all kinds of plans. If, no matter how fancy the plans are, if the plans are not in sync with God's purpose for our lives in this particular season, it's not going to happen we got to be frustrated and so one of the things we got to be very sure is that this plan that i'm pursuing is in line it's in sync with god's plan for my life in this season and that is what we set out to do in 2020 at the beginning of this year and suddenly coronavirus showed its ugly head it must never be the reason why we stop short of what god intended for us to do listen nothing takes God by surprise. God is not surprised by the coronavirus because guess what? He's behind it. He said, I'm behind everything that is called good and everything that is called evil. It doesn't matter the tag you give things that happens. God says, I'm behind it. So God is not surprised by the, the, the pandemic. He's not taken by surprise. He knew all that before he told you to do what he asked you to do from the beginning of January 1. And so he knew that and he still said, I want you to do the things I've called you to do. And so that should never be a reason why you cannot accomplish the things God asks you to do. There is an anointing to finish and that anointing is in him. Glory to Jesus. Listen to me, child of God. Bible makes it very clear in scripture that if we would put our trust in him if we will commit our plans to him our plans will be successful and this week we've spoken about a smart goal which must be in christ our goal is smart when it is founded on the direction of the holy spirit then your goal can be specific because god specifically spoke to you we are all over the place where we are not sure when you are very sure that this is what God wants me to do, your surety is in God because you heard his voice clearly. The only reason why your goals becomes very specific is because you are sure and you are convicted in your heart that this is what God truly wants me to do in this season. And that is why we need to hear from the Spirit of God. That is the only reason why our goals will be specific from the acronym SMART, S-M-A-R-T. S means what? Specific. When you have a head from God, it is try and error. I'm going to try to do this. If this doesn't work, I will do that. I want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit. No. Let God speak to you clearly. That is when you can have what? A specific goal. And yesterday we spoke about goals being measurable. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of God has spoken to you exactly what you got to be doing, then that goal can be measurable. God has spoken to you in this season that this season I want you to minister and bring souls into my house that my house may be filled. And there are hundred chairs in that church. And so far on the average, you are sitting 20. It means that that goal, which is measurable, 100 souls that must fill the house of God has not yet been attained. It is measurable. But today I want to talk to you about attainability. 
The A in smart goal is the word attainable. Listen, God says that there is no temptation that has befallen you and I, all of us, the body of Christ, except that which is common to all. And God actually says, I will not ask you to do something that I have not given you the capacity to manage. It means God doesn't give us more than we can carry. He knows the grace upon you. He knows the anointing upon you. Why? Because he put it upon you. And so he will not give you an assignment that is above your pay grade. Glory to God. And so the question I want to ask you is that, if you are making $500 a week, it simply means that your annual salary is going to be $26,000. And so if you tell me you want to save $100,000, which is almost four times your pay for the entire year, and you tell me this year I want to be able to save $100,000 and you have running bills, and you are making $26,000 in a year, the question is that how are you going to attain that? I'm not talking about you not having faith because the Bible says the just shall walk by faith. But Bible also says that faith without works is dead. It means we got to trust God. That is why the Bible says the anointing is on our hands. We could have said God has anointed me, he's blessed me, so I go to sleep and a blessing will come. Money will fall from heaven. No, Bible says the anointing. He says I will bless the work of your hands. The blessing is your hands. But this hands has to be in position to activate that blessing by putting that hand to work. God rewards hard work. So you can't say he's blessed my hands and I go to sleep. He blesses your hands so you put those hands to work so that through that working God will release blessings to you. So even though we believe God that just lives by faith, we believe God for great things, that great things must be attainable. So the question today is that is your goal attainable? It's like you're saying, I'm believing God to have 10 kids this year. 10 kids. Because God says that he will give me double for my trouble. And for the past 15 years of marriage, you've not had one kid. And you're like, you know what? I, I, I would have expected to have had five kids over the last 15 years. I haven't had it. This year be my year of double portion. I'm asking God for double. I should have had five over the 50. I'm going to have 10 kids. Listen, the only way that thing will come to pass, and I'm not limiting the power of God because God can do all things. But you are placing yourself in a place to have extra marital affairs if that is what you want to do. But the callings of God are callings that are of no confusion. He is not the author of confusion. And so that goal must be attainable. That goal you have set for yourself. And I tell you one thing. When you set a goal that is unattainable, it only brings misery. Because Bible says that when a vision is not attained, it only causes the heart to be in misery. When you set a goal and you are not able to attain the goal, you know what happens? It creates disappointments in your heart. It causes you to give up on the purpose God plays on your heart. But today, I want you to lift up your hands and say, Lord, grant me the grace to accomplish that which is attainable. Attainable goals. Attainable goals. I want to get my PhD this year when I don't have a bachelor's degree. It's unattainable. So you want to pray to God and say, God, this afternoon, grant me the grace to accomplish attainable goals, goals that are attainable. Lord, in the name of Jesus, your word declares that how are we going to have hours when we have not been graced towards of that which belongs to another man? Somebody might be desiring a mega church when he's not pastored five people. Lord, that is unattainable goals. May we embrace our humble beginnings. It could be the place of attainable uh, goals. Lord, I pray that grace comes upon us. That whatever you want us to attain in that season, it could be something that is humbling. It could be something that is small. But Lord, may we not despise that humble place. May we not despise that small beginnings. May we embrace the grace and the anointing for those things that are attainable within this season. May that grace come upon you, child of God. It might look small, but Bible says do not despise that small beginnings. Because God is going to look at your faithfulness in those small things to now bring you great things. Look at the, the, the parable of the talents. The man that got two talents, he got two more. The man that got five, he got five more. The man that got one, he said, I know you were a shrewd businessman. So I want to hit that which you gave to me. Bible says God took it from him and gave it to the one that had many. And Bible says 
those who had few, theirs were taken and given to those that had more. When we fail to recognize humble beginning, we lose it all. So your attainable place might be very humbling. But there is grace upon you this afternoon to accomplish everything God wants you to attain in 2020 to prepare you for the coming season. So receive that grace this afternoon as you continue in prayer. I want you to revise your goals for 2020. Look at where you got it wrong. Look at where you placed unattainable goals. Revise it and begin to trust God that by the end of this year, that revised attainable smart goal can be accomplished even to the glory of God. Listen to me, child of God, this season we are coming in at the end of it all to rejoice and to bless the name of the Lord because goals would have been accomplished. God bless you. I love you. Tomorrow, I'm looking forward to connecting with you. I wanted to share this space so somebody on your platform, on your Facebook can also get blessed. Copy the link, pass it on to your groups, groups that you belong to on all social media, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever group you belong to. I want you to pass this message on. There is an anointing right here that needs to impact somebody. At the same time tomorrow, I look forward to connecting with you. I love you. Grace and peace to you. Shalom.